am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and my kids need new winter hats. Here's one of the last hats that I made specifically for them. Uh, the orange one was just on the floor, so we're going with that, but they're a little too short for them now. Uh, I love these hats. The kids each dyed uh, the lighter yarn and then picked the color for the deeper yarn that I used for them, but they need something new because right now, they're both wearing hats that I made for their father, and it's a little bit big. And then, well, Keith doesn't have a handmade hat to wear. <laughs> it is mega snowy outside. It's January 2023. One of the first times we've really had snow, at least a lot of snow, that has lasted. Because every other time we've had snow, it's been gone really, really quickly. But I just finished filming the recap for the January 2022. Three, Chemnitz Dialong, and I'm obsessed with the colorway I created for this stream. The one thing is I wish that the yarn was a little bit more saturated. I almost went and was like, oh, I'm going to use this to make a hat for Lucas. But I think that there's enough pale patches in here that he would probably want something that is a little bit deeper overall. I'm, this yarn is Knit Picks Twill, which is a very bouncy Aran weight yarn, but I think there's only, uh, I'm blanking between this and Muse, like 140 yards per 100 grams. And so I wasn't sure if it would be enough to make a hat, but I just went and looked on Ravelry. Looks like lots of people made hats like that. So it should work. But so, yeah, I've been going, after going back and forth, I decided let's do a dying to knit video. Uh, and maybe we'll also dye up some yarn for writer using a similar technique. So I want to use the colors, the yarn, uh, and the general technique I did in January's dialogue, but just pump up the volume of the colors a little bit. I feel like a lot of these dying to knit videos end up being hats, but you know, it's what we gotta do. It's what we gotta do. <laughs> and I truly love this yarn and was just always afraid that one skein wouldn't be enough for a hat. I'll dye enough yarn so that way if I run out or get close to playing yarn chicken at the end, then I'll have another skein on hand so it won't be uh, devastating if I run out. But I'm curious if I'll be able to get a hat that would fit my head. I'm like an adult small head size, so we'll see. Originally, I thought that I might include dyeing yarn for Ryder in this video, but I'm realizing I should probably let him pick out the colors that I'm gonna layer together. Uh, he still loves playing Chemnitz with me, and so since it's dry powder, well, maybe I can get him fitted with a, I have an N95 that might fit him, so that way he can watch while I do it. So maybe Ryder will take part in that one. But anyway, for Lucas, the colors that I had used with the whale are Alpine Blue, Indigo Blue, Sea Spray, Silver Gray, and then Tornado Gray. The Silver Gray isn't a color, and the Tornado aren't colors that I feel like I need quite as much in the yarn that I now have in my brain, but I want to use them with our yarn because I think they'll add dimension and I don't want to leave them out. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna, I guess, go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses and gloves, and start dyeing this yarn. I talked about the twill, but I did not talk about our yarn mop for today. This is 100 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK. And I picked this specific yarn base for our yarn mop because the yarn mops that I did in the dye long were on sock yarn and I have this beautiful speckled colorway on DK weight yarn. And so I thought it would be fun to have another DK weight colorway uh, that would go with a speckled that's in my shop, even though this probably won't be added to the shop for a really long time because I'm anticipating it taking a while for me to finally make a hat. <laughs> I have no acid in our yarn mop either. I might add some at some point, but this will be just off camera. All right, we're gonna dye 300 grams of our twill. Uh, and I think my plan is to apply the dye a little bit randomly all over. And then I'm gonna flip the yarn, apply dye still randomly again to the other side before we come and add water to it, just so that way we can get more coverage. With the whale yarn, I was okay having white patches behind, but I want, I think I want more coverage than the yarn I showed in the intro. But now I'm finally gonna go put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and I'm already wearing gloves. All right, now on this base, what I had done before was apply the colors in blocks. I'm starting with the tornado gray. And yes, I have a segment of it down there, 
But then I'm also going to just more randomly place some of it around. And you'll note that I'm not gonna be treating every single skein exactly the same. Okay, next up, I figure we'll do some silver gray. Uh, this color, I don't feel like I need to have a lot of it, but just kind of more randomly placing it on. We'll see how it goes. The, the tornado gray is more blue. It's not as blue as like a blue steel or a navy, but it's more, it's got more blue in it overall than the other colors. Okay, I'm coming in with some sea spray now. This is a color that does have a little bit of some green in it along with our blues. Okay, maybe a little more than I thought, but it is still, it's more blue than green for sure. Okay, and now for our blues. I absolutely adore indigo blue. And I'm trying to focus a lot on areas that I see some white still. But what's gonna blend these colors a lot is both when we uh, finally apply water on them, but also because when we flip and apply color to the other side, uh, things are gonna be in different spots. <laughs> So we'll see what happens and uh, if things blend a little bit too much. I suppose, hmm, well I haven't added the alpine blue yet. Uh, I was just like thinking, I was like, oh, I suppose that I could uh, change this up a little bit and like add the dye or add water before we flip to sort of see where the colors are but I think I'm gonna do something a little bit differently to help me decide where to put things on the other side as I add that alpine blue. Okay, and what we're gonna do is before we flip the yarn, I'm gonna pat these colors in just a bit. There's not very much liquid in here really at all, but this can let us see kind of where things are. And so then when I flip, then I'm also not worried about flinging dye around. <laughs> now, my top water is slightly acidic, uh, and so that is something that I do need to think about in general when I'm dyeing yarn. And since this is superwash yarn, we will likely see some of these colors strike where they were placed. Uh, and as for our yarn mop, I am going to add a little bit of some acid onto it. Hopefully I'm on the screen right now. And I'm going to squish it uh, because some of these blues are moving around a lot on me. And I want to be able to clean off my hands as we're adding the color onto our yarn here. But now we're going to add colors to this other side. And I'm going to start off with some of the silver gray, and we're gonna lay our colors on in a very similar way to what we had done last time. Now the irony here of me picking a color white, like I picked this and I was like, oh, Lucas would love this, based on the color combination. But what feels especially ironic for me is that Lucas's bedroom as a baby definitely had a, uh, a whale design. Uh, that's what I had for him. And so that was the bedroom I designed. And in fact, I had tons of DIY projects and things. And on the blog, I had tons of stuff about the nursery and whatnot, even like finished pictures of when we finally had a two bedroom apartment because we did not have a two bedroom apartment at first. <laughs> for the first nine months of Lucas's life, we shared a room because we had a one bedroom apartment. And I just remember he was a pretty good sleeper, but it was very nice to have him have his own room. <laughs> that was very, very nice. Uh, now is the part of the story where I'm like, hopefully I'm not adding too much dye, but I think we're gonna be fine. I think we're gonna be fine. And the thing is, we can always add much more dye. 
We are definitely not limited to the amount of dye that we add here. Uh, once I'm done adding dye, I can totally look at this and be like, oh no, we need more color. And that can be true. And if I've added too much dye and the colors blend too much, well then, maybe we'll do something else <laughs> for Lucas. So the goal is to try to dye something for Lucas based on something I just dyed like a week ago, even less than a week ago. But sometimes things don't always turn out the way you want. And so if it didn't, then we can try again. I'm trying to add some of this alpine blue a little bit all over. There's not a ton of white spots left, which is good, but I do feel like I'm adding a ton of dye here. Okay. Ooh, I think maybe when we add our acid on, ooh, I'm like debating a lot. Okay, but let's, let's tap things. Tap things in. We've got a bunch of dye on my hands. That's all gonna go on our yarn mop. And now I'm gonna go and get some water. But I think in the eight cups of water I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put one tablespoon of white vinegar. I want things to spread, but not too much. Okay, and now is our moment of truth. I'm adding on our eight cups of water. Okay, and we're gonna start helping this dye move through the yarn. And so my hope is to have something that feels very, very blue, but has some good dimension to it. And I also wanted something that was much more saturated than what we had originally. Now, when we start heat setting this, we might discover that, okay, there's some areas that are not as saturated as what I wanted, but I will say for now, Things are looking really, really good. But now I can also go take off my respirator because everything is very wet. <laughs> and now while we're at it, I'm gonna add more acid because I really, really like where we are. And while I don't mind if the colors like move and change and like soften even more, I don't want it to change too much. Uh, so, yeah, we've, we've added acid here. Oh, this is so pretty. I know it's gonna get a lot lighter once it dries, and there might even be a, some light patches in here, but overall, it's not feeling as pastel as some parts of the other yarn felt, and so I think he's gonna like this more, at least I hope. And I love that we have something feeling so navy without using navy. I mean, we did use gray. But still, okay, I'm gonna go get my hot plate so we can start heat setting this. And if you're curious why we're using a hot plate today, it's because I have other things heating over on the stove. And now I'm gonna turn this on. I think I'm gonna start on high. We'll have to add more water as time goes on. I'm gonna have set up some water with a turkey baster to have on hand. And I'm not gonna do it now, but then I can sort of spray the edges with water as needed. It's gonna take a while to heat up. And while this might look like a mass of uh, just navy, I do see grayer and brighter blue patches. And so I think it'll be really lovely to work with. And Lucas has been enjoying wearing and picking out deeper colors from his wardrobe recently anyway. But yeah, I'm thinking rather, even though I pre the yarn, rather than me picking colors and dyeing something green for Ryder right now, I'm gonna let him pick if he wants something to feel darker or brighter. But anyway, I'm gonna bring this up until it heats up. The downside of the hot plate is it's gonna take longer, uh, but I'm gonna let this heat for 30 minutes and then we'll check back in. But I'll keep an eye on it and reduce the heat once things start getting steamy and things like that. Okay, it has been 30 minutes, and what I want to do now is pick up our yarn and flip it over. Okay, I 
see that we have some patches that are a little bit lighter here on this side. And I'm torn, but I think that what I want to do is actually go put my respirator back on and we're going to add a little bit more sea spray here. Okay, I could have flipped this a little bit sooner, but yeah, I just wanted to bring in a little bit more of this color on some of these patches that are just, oh, oh dear, just a little bit lighter overall. And it's okay if we still end up with some pastel notes on our yarn in the end. Uh, that I don't mind. I don't mind if we have some paler notes here. It's just there's a few spots that I'm like, okay, we might still end up with some pale spots in here in the end, but I just wanted this hint more color. Of course, now <laughs> this means that we're going to have to wait another 30 minutes to finish setting the color, but you can see that uh, the rest of the color has cleared really, really well in here. So I think that after those 30 minutes are up, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat and let the yarn cool completely. And as for our yarn mop, we have a leftover dye bath from another project, and I'm going to need to turn the heat back on. But I'm going to add this here in the water and I'm very very little color is coming out uh, because our mop has been sitting for so long a lot of the color has just absorbed but we're also oh, we're seeing some blues come out there uh, but we will go ahead and let this sit and heat for 30 minutes as well there was plenty of acid in here so I don't need to add any more the 30 minutes are up and so I just turned off the heat and I'm now gonna unplug uh, the hot plate, but I figured may as well flip the yarn over. Not that I'm planning on adding any more dye or anything, but just moving things around sometimes is a good thing to do. Oh, this is so, so pretty. I'm really excited. All right, I'm going to let this cool off completely so then we can wash it. Let's wash this yarn that I dyed for hopefully Lucas's hat. I'll have to sh I suppose I'll have to show it to him and see if he likes the yarn. <laughs> All right, but let's see. Fingers crossed that we don't see any bleeding. I haven't used a lot of these blues enough to know how they manage. I see a hint of something, which isn't a cause for immediate concern. <laughs> um, but I'm going to now add some, well, it's just soap mixed with water. And we'll fill the facing back up. Okay, and let's see. All right, I am seeing some blues come out. Uh, hopefully there aren't any clumps of the indigo. Was it the indigo? One of either indigo or midnight blue sometime today when I was dying. So either this video or a different one. It was giving me some chunks. But so what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of soap again, and then I am going to fill the basin up, and we're going to soak the yarn for five minutes, and then come back and rinse it more. Maybe it wasn't quite five minutes, but um, I did come and move the yarn through the water a bit, so sort of like raising and lowering it, and I'm seeing some color but it's not seeming any worse than what I saw before. And I will say that that is very, very pastel. Um, so let's see what happens on this next rinse. But oh my goodness, this color has depth. It is gorgeous. Oh, please, oh, please. I adore, adore dark, saturated colors. That's great. I'm not seeing any more bleeding. I'm gonna go ahead and give this yarn one more rinse just to make sure all the soap is out. Then I'm gonna put it through a spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the yarn I dyed for Lucas's hat. I love it. 
it is like a deep blue, uh, but there's still some green hints in it. Uh, some of the skeins have, let me see if I can find one, a little bit more of an obvious green note, uh, but it's so, so pretty overall. And I just love what this base does. When it comes to absorbing color, you can see that because I think it's like a little bit more relaxed and then really like plumps up and fluffs up even more once you dye it, you can get these glazed like sections. Here are some more. It just feels like the color is really, really light. It's also because the plies themselves are really tight. But anyway, I need to cake up one of these skeins. This blue is beautiful. Um, I love the like little bit of almost green hints and what the grays do to the color overall. I'm glad that I have an extra 200 grams. Uh, I have a feeling, I have a few hat designs in mind, but I have a feeling that the hat I wanna make will definitely use close to 100 grams and maybe might need slightly over. So having two backup skeins is really, really nice. But now, uh, I'm not sure how much vlog footage I will have or if we will be showing off the finished project now. But who knows, maybe we'll have some other <laughs> clips that I filmed along the way. Don't worry, I didn't forget the yarn mop. This time, our mop is actually a lot lighter than what our yarn looks like. And the main reason for that is that even though I was applying a lot more dye onto our yarn itself, there's still a similar amount of dye on my gloved fingertips as there might be for other types of yarn mops. I'm dyeing if I'm speckling or something. And so for that, the color here is relatively consistent, but this time less saturated than our main colorway. I went through Ravelry to look at twill and try to find hats that people had made with just one skein. And I ended up picking the Tin Can Knits Hat Barley. This was a really beautiful knit and I enjoyed that there were sections of stockinette and garter stitch. It made the project interesting to work on. I spent a week or two knitting the hat and I'll be honest, I still haven't blocked it. But uh, then it just takes me a lot longer sometimes to finish up these videos. And here is the finished hat. Uh, I ended up getting the gauge on size six needles and I believe I probably used the same size for the ribbing. And as I said, I still haven't blocked it. I'm a firm believer in blocking in general, uh, but I just never had time and our winter ended up being so mild that even though I finished this in February, uh, Lucas still has not worn it. Now, the best thing here is that I did it with one skein and I had plenty of yarn to spare. I remember I was nervous. I tend to obsessively weigh my knitting as I'm working on it so that way I know far before the end if I'm gonna run out of yarn because then I know okay, I can make this a little longer or I need to do an adjustment so I have enough fiber. I don't know if I've even weighed the leftovers yet. Uh, so, okay, 9.97 grams left. Uh, we used, I would say, over 90% of the yarn. I think that the original skein weighed maybe around 102 grams. So we do have a good amount left over. It's not a lot of yardage, but enough that I wasn't nervous to finish it. And so this makes me feel a lot more confident about making a single skein project with twill because this is a great, great hat yarn. And you can see I definitely did not skimp. It's slouchy, there's plenty of space. This is a hat that should fit Lucas for years, years to come. And I mean, I like it too. So maybe I'll have to make one for myself. But I did pick another design for Ryder's hat. And right now as I'm editing, it's the end of May. And I think I've only managed to do a little bit of the brim. It's sad because I don't usually have that much time where I sit and knit anymore. And I need to make changes of that and do more <laughs> knit alongs, which, Oh man, I started one last year and I stayed on progress until then I didn't. That is something I think I've got one clue left that I need to finish up. So that would be another dying to knit video. <laughs> but I hope to be doing more. I always do. Yeah, but I find uh, sometimes idle time I might be playing video games. And so 
that cuts into my knitting time a little bit, but uh, I have some other projects that I am working on and I'm hoping to uh, share more of these dying to knit videos. So if you like them, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. This design detail is so subtle. So I think about a third of the hat that has this garter stitch, but it makes it so, so cute. And uh, now we can go look and see what Lucas thinks about his new hat. Uh, <laughs> as I mentioned, Lucas is not as enthusiastic about playing cabinets with me anymore. He would much rather read a book or play video games. So that's just why in general he's in fewer videos and Ryder makes more of a random appearance at time because Ryder wants to be part of the videos and so I'm never going to force them. <laughs> But I will say, Lucas was quite into uh, my spring mini skein mini series theme this year and did help a bit behind the scenes. Just, let's just interested in being on camera. But anyway, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz and let's go see what Lucas thinks. <laughs> Lucas, what is it right now? May 23rd, 2023. Is it still winter? No, it's not winter. It's spring, but it feels like summer. Okay, would you like a new winter hat? Definitely not. <laughs> but do you want a new winter hat for next winter? Yes. Why? Because. Because you've been wearing daddies? Because I just want a new one. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> Hold it up to camera. I just got hit in the face with a how. Well, what do you think of the color? And I is like it soft? It. It's the way yarn usually is. Okay. Try it, try it on. <clears throat> Too big. <laughs> Well, okay, can I, how about I fix it a little bit, okay? And I still haven't blocked it. And so you wear it like this. It's got some like cool space to be like, cool dude. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> Wait, like what? I like this. You like it? What do you like about it? Cool dude style. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, you're... <laughs> Wow, actually, look at the way you put it, it looks really cool. Now, look the other way. Yeah, I really, really like it. Is there anything you wish that was different about the color? It's perfect. <clears throat> oh, it's almost like your shirt. Mm -hmm. Mommy loves the way the color came out. Yeah. How old are you now? Nine. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're on camera, girl. Okay, Lucas. This hat is a little bit different from some others. It's a less scratchy material. Feel it. Does it feel more comfortable on your head? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hang on, I think this, yeah. Now, is there anything else that you want to say to Chemnitz Land? Well, buy Chemnitz products. They're really good. Smash that subscribe button, but don't smash your device because if you smash your device, you'd probably have to pay thousands of dollars to get a new one. <laughs> So, yeah. Bye, Chemnet stuff. My name is Lucas. <laughs> Chemnet signing off. <laughs> oh, and I'm Rebecca from Chemnet, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. Signing off now.